All right, good news. Despite what it looks like, I'm actually a lot further along on the custom install solution, the custom install pressure washing solution than, uh, than it may appear here at first. Uh, so I'm gonna take you through all the parts and pieces, uh, take you through what I'm missing. There's a few things that I'm gonna have to order here, so that's gonna postpone it a little bit. Uh, it's okay because we don't have the pumps here anyway. I have the only one in the US, so uh, we, we don't have uh, any to, to offer you just this right this second. And if you're watching this video at some point in the future, Future, hopefully we have them in stock and, and are able to you know, provide them in, in timely order. But uh, what you're looking at is a 18 inch shelf that now has several holes in it and me trying to figure out where the holes should go. I'd completely neg neglected where the unloader valve was and the unloader valve actually extends outward a little bit and you know, pops out a little bit as the you know, pressure is released you know, when you're pulling the trigger. So I'll show you that and, and the little adjustments that I've made. I'm going to show you what hardware is going to come with the kit. Uh, and I think, uh, and I'll explain this in a minute, but I think I'm going to send the shelf without any holes in it. Uh, that way you can position it exactly where you want on your own. I'm going to give guidelines of what you need and what you should need, what you should do. Uh, but uh, but I think I think it might we might be better off because it's such an easy thing to do. You know, if you if you can't drill holes in the shelf, then you probably can't do the rest of this install. Uh, and so I'm trying to make it as simple as possible, but also don't want to pigeonhole someone. What happens if you needed to turn the thing this way and my holes are here on the shelf and you'll have, have holes that you don't need? Uh, so I'm thinking I'm probably going to send the shelf with, without them. But we have an 18 inch by 8 inch stainless shelf, which works out perfectly. And then finally, after months and months of, of vetting and testing, trying to figure out what hose reel, and then I ordered the hose reels and they didn't come. And so I've been doing this dance to get the right hose reel. I have another one sitting over here, another one sitting in the other room. I finally found the hose reel that I want. Uh, we'll talk about why we're doing a hand crank versus a, a spring loaded retractable. Talk about all that stuff as well. Uh, and then we have uh, our CR Spotless DIW20. Uh, I actually, I mounted this five inches lower and my stub here is probably going to present a little bit of a problem. I'm probably going to have to cut the wall, move the stub downward uh, because this is all going to be hard plumbed. I'm going to show you how, you know, what I'm intending to do here as well. Uh, some of this stuff, you're either going to have to hire a plumber uh, I'm working on maybe providing a solution, you know, if you're really handy uh, and you want to do it, uh, I'm actually going to be using Prevost piping, the same piping we used for all the compressed air stuff, uh, which works, should work for water, just the same. And the only thing I'm a little concerned about is running deionized water through aluminum. It's going to leach the pipe, but how long is that going to take, you know? 15 years, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe two years. Uh, regardless, if I start to spring a little bit of a leak, I'll just replace the pipe every couple of years. It won't be, it won't be a big deal uh, because all of the, uh, all the valves will be stainless anyway. So, so I'm thinking about doing a, a Prevost system. So that's why you have the gap here. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, if you don't, you probably should. It's Obsessed Garage on Instagram. Uh, but I had actually had, again, the gap five inches bigger. I had uh, my Mosmatic wand holder, just kind of experimenting. I'd mounted it sideways here. It looked really cool, but not as efficient as, as it should be. So I, uh, I stuck it up there just to see what would happen and uh, see what people said about it. Uh, and uh, and you know, I probably wasn't gonna leave it in there, there anyway. It was interfering with where the plug is. And you know, there's all kinds of little myriad of issues, but um, I think we've got I think we've got that licked. Uh, this is a GFI, so I think we're gonna be fine with even though the pump is up here, the water is over here. Uh, the, if water, if this thing exploded, water got on the on the outlet, it would instantly trip. So I mean, no different than your kitchen sink being next to uh, a power plug. So I think I think we're gonna be just fine there. You know, if I was really obsessed, I guess I would move it up, but this is gonna be more for show than go anyway. I, I doubt I'm gonna use this all that often. Uh, so in, in OGHQ, I mean, my wash bay is a mile down the road. I'm doing this mainly so that I have some washing solution here, but again, I want this place to be a vetting and proving grounds and testing grounds. And one thing for testing this is just to make sure it fits on the wall you know, and create a, a, a reasonable solution so that people like yourselves can buy this and, and or piece it together 
together. Maybe you don't want the CR spotless, maybe you only need the shelf, maybe you need the shelf and the hose reel, uh, vetting different hose and you know, kind of vetting and testing the stuff just to save yourself the trouble because I'm telling you, I mean, there's, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, there's a gentleman that I've sold lots of, uh, the high-end pressure washer and sold lots of stuff to. And I, I don't think people realize, you know, when you embark on a project like this, even when I'm providing you with most of the information, there's still a lot of work, a lot of trial and error, a lot of ordering and waiting, ordering and waiting. Uh, so imagine how much ordering and waiting I've had to do to get this stupid thing to, to be where, even where we're at. Uh, and it's still not done. So there's a process that you need to be willing to go through that I'm hoping, let's say that there are 12 steps to the process, I'm hoping to take nine of them away from you, but there's still going to be three steps to this that you're gonna have to figure out on your own that I, I, I'm not gonna be able to do for you. So anyway, we're, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working through the process here. I wanna show you where I'm at, show you updates, show you um, how to do a couple of tweaks. I need to torque the, the hose down now that it's ready. I've already test fitted the hose several times. This is a 100 foot uh, Cobra Jet single wire hose you know the real advantage of this hose is I mean look at this I mean you couldn't do that with a with a traditional you know pressure washer hose I could probably even coil it a little bit tighter I mean it's really pliable now it's still a pressure washer hose so it still has some you know has some kinkability to it if you will uh, but it's very 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 it's the best pressure washer hose I've ever gotten my hands on and I've, I've I have, shoot, just in my wash bay, I think I bought a half a dozen of them to try to find one that worked well. I, you know, I don't have a Cobra Jet in the wash bay, which I wish I did. So anyway, the, the Cox reel, I'm really, really psyched about this. You know, it doesn't look like much, it looks very industrial. Um, it just so happens that it's blue. I guess it's working out and everything's being blue, you know, is blue in here, all the blue accents, but, this reel, and I'll show you in a minute, uh, even the handle, you first look at it and you're like, I don't know about that handle. You know, it's not, um, it's not fit and finish like Ely, right? Now Ely is, as far as I know, has gotten out of the pressure washer hose reel game. Uh, they're only doing the real residential hose game. But uh, one of the things with Ely is there's, even as precision as it is, there's a little bit of a, a wobble to it. Uh, when you get your hands on one of these and you start to wind it up, you'll, you'll start to notice how stout it is. It's just, it just winds differently. You know, it's just, uh, it's hard to explain. I mean, I, I was originally intending to do the really inexpensive uh, uh, MTM reel, which is a, you know, the same Chinese sort of spec that makes rapid reel and a lot of the other, um, a lot of the other companies you know, just take that reel and rebrand it. Um, these guys make these in the U.S. I think they're made in the U.S. I'm pretty sure they're made in Arizona. Uh, and they're, it's just a different level of quality. It's a different, there's a different stoutness to it uh, that, uh, that we should buy this once and never have to buy it again. Uh, the swivel is extremely, extremely high end, high quality. Uh, so the, you know, the mechanism for turning and winding up your hose is, is very, very different than, than what we're, we're normal, normally used to. All right, so I'm going to stop yapping here. Uh, this is an, I'm not intending this to be comprehensive here today. I'm just giving you an insight on where I'm at and then we'll do some more comprehensive videos of the exact, you know, everything start to finish, you know, what this package is, what it entails. I think it's gonna come in because this hose reel is about a hundred bucks less than the other. If you don't do the Mosmatic one, I think it's gonna come in about 1650, uh, maybe 1700 bucks uh, for the whole package, which is right around where I thought it would be, which I'm, 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 I'm glad. Uh, so there's a couple of, um, uh, a couple other things I have to completely finalize, uh, but I think that, you know, I think it's going to be around there. So, so, you know, stay tuned for that. So let's get up in here and let me show you what's going on. All right, so here's how the hose reel works, right? So you have a threaded, 3 8 threaded um, inlet, or I guess that would be for, for the hose inlet, right? Because we have our 3 8 threaded, which was going to go up to our pressure washer with a flex line. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, this would be our, our way to torque down. I haven't done that yet, so I'm going to torque this here on camera. Um, but we have 3 threaded. I'm, you know, again, I would suggest that we 
we do some some Teflon tape there, right? And then the Cobra Jet has the nice clean uh, termination. Uh, put the swiveling end here, right? So we're going to make sure to put the swiveling so swiveling end of the hose, so that way I can turn this without binding this all up, right? Then we have a stay, you know, a little clamp, a little anti-vibration clamp that'll keep the hose from ever unwinding completely uh, so that, you know, mounts to the side here. Uh, and, and so now, you know, we can wind up uh, the 100 foot hose. It fits on here perfectly. You could do a 50 or a 75. I figured, why not put the 100? It's not that much more money. Why not put the 100 foot hose on here and then you can wrap it halfway around the house if you needed to, right? So let's get this, let's get this torqued here. And I'll talk about how I mounted it to the wall. I didn't capture it on video. Sorry about that. On this, I've aired on the side of just getting it done rather than videoing every single step of the way. So this needs to be a 29. That's an 18. Let's get in here. I just need to make a few turns on this. I got it reasonably tight by hand. So, you know, if we do this right, we shouldn't have to worry about any leaks or anything. So, even though I've got drywall behind here, you know, we shouldn't have any issues with leaking. We're messing up our wall. The only time you know you're changing the filters on the CR, even then you just get a beach towel. I would get a beach towel out and then keep it level, and hasn't been an issue. Now these are NPT traditional NPT threads, so they tend to grab. It's not equal; they're not equal length threads. So as it approaches tight, it uh, essentially stops moving. It'll never go in all the way, so don't worry about that. I just want to make sure it's decently torqued. I think that should do it. All right, so take our hose and let's wrap this up just so that we can get it nice and clean. Let's talk about since I got you in here. Um, I just did some lags, right? So these are some 5 16th lags. Nothing particularly special about them. Uh, I did stainless just because I could. Uh, and then some fender washers you know, on both the top and bottom. Uh, it's a little clunky to get in here, especially under the shelf. I don't know, I'm always looking through this through the camera and everything looks crooked. I assure you it's as level as level can be. So we're good there. All right, so uh, there's the hose reel. Let me back this up and I'll show you the wind on this thing. It's just, it's really nice. So we have a drag here on the right. Uh, so make sure I put the drag all the way out. Our basically just clamps. Uh, the, the hose reel is smooth enough where it really doesn't, uh, you know what, I wanna get some pictures of this here. You get a few photos. See, but the nice part about this is that there's no, there's no wobble, right? So that there's no like wobble side, side to side. It just feels really stout. It's also easy to do a Sess Garage level wrap. Right, where we keep it nice and tight, <laughs> even with a pressure washer hose. Now, I'm interested to see, again, part of the reason why it's so easy to wrap right this moment is we don't have any water in it, right? We load it up with 100 feet of water. How does that work? See how nice and smooth. I think the handle could be a little nicer. I know it could be a little nicer. But I love the, at first I didn't want it, it feel kind of, 
kind of narrow to me. So the other, the 1125 would stick out to here, right? Same thing if you do any, any kind of, um, any spring loaded hose reel. I don't know if just for my pressure washer, I never like a pressure washer hose is so much stiffer than compressed air hose and compressed air hose is already hard enough to deal with when you have a spring loaded, you know, traditional hose reel. And so I like these winding re reels much more. Now, another thing we could consider is putting a motor on this too, if we really wanted to get crazy. I think those, I think then these go to six or 700 bucks. I think this, as of right now today, is the cost on this. So the retail on this is 172. Keep this out of the way. Look how clean that is. I'm not, I'm not fighting this. It's just easy. Just keep my hand on it to guide it, and we've got it, got it locked, or got it, you know, nice and perfectly wrapped. I can set my drag then, and this sucker isn't, you know, I can still move it, but this sucker isn't going anywhere. I can position it however I want. You know, if I wanted it to hang down a little bit. I think I'd probably position it like this. I think I'd be likely to, even though I'm gonna have the hose reel on the side here, I think I'm gonna be likely to disconnect it every time. Maybe try to run the water out if I could, uh, blow the water out of it. Um, but yeah, man, that looks great. It's such a great hose reel. Let me get a little side view here for you. So there's the hose reel. So it's a Coxill 112. Let's just call it the 100 series hose reel. There's our swivel. Really stout, really nice. Again, not the prettiest reel in the world, especially when you look at this side, you know, on the very basic handle, but it gets the job done. Really clean. And then our Cobra Jet hose, our 100 foot hose fits nicely, a little room to spare. I don't think you could swing 125 feet we you know they do have 150 foot or even bigger version so there it is all right so let's discuss the uh, 1322 if you haven't gone and watched the video about this um, you might want to go check it out uh, what I've done is taken the power cord and zip tied it around the back here uh, I'm gonna cut the power cord but I do have it you know I'm breaking the rules by making a making a, a circle here but I've got some uh, some anti-vibration uh, collars uh, or little anti -vib -vib vibration clamps. Uh, these are T304 stainless. Again, I don't think stainless really matters, but uh, to match the stainless uh, handle. Now, we could easily have taken, and I'll leave this up to you if you want to take the handle off. And this is another reason why I don't think I'm going to drill the shelf. Um, you have these, uh, these mounts on the side. You could take this whole piece off, right? Uh, so you'd pull the rubber things off the bottom, the bolts that run all the way through, and you could mount the pump directly to the uh, the shelf. And uh, you may end up needing a few couple of washers here because the, the oil change bolt area kind of sticks out. But, uh, but in general, I think uh, I, uh, the way I'm going to leave it, because if I ever wanted to take the pump off, you know, I, I, I want to have the handle on it. Some people may take the pump off the wall and go take it in the backyard you know, once a year or twice a year, or if you're in Canada or in Minnesota or you're somewhere where it gets really cold, you want to take your pump inside, uh, you don't want to leave it out in the garage year round, uh, I'm going to leave it, the handle on it so that you can move it a little bit easier. But we have these, uh, these um, T304 stainless little clamps here, and so I'm going to put these in place and show you how to wing nut it uh, to the you know to the um, to the stand up there and let's see this is the unloader valve which should be should be open all the way open all the way means that it's turned in right so it's positive uh, but it still will you know as it turns off it kicks out you know about an eighth of an inch or so and so my, when I first mounted it, I mounted it a little bit too close to the wall. I think it still would have been okay, but uh, I ended up uh, drilling some more holes, moving it another quarter inch out. Uh, so let's get it up on the wall and we'll talk a little bit more about the clips and how I'm gonna do that. Let's see if I can do this without making a huge mess. Because I just painted the walls again for like the fifth time up here. 
Still gonna have to do some more touch-ups when it's all said and done. I'm sure I'll mark it up again when I mess up the plumbing. This thing weighs 40, 40 something pounds. All right, let's get our clamps in place. Just for reference, my holes are four and five eighths on center, All right? The front, the, the, the back and front. The rear hole is two and three eighths off the back. And then the front is six and an eighth. Knew that was gonna happen. All right. So I've got a couple of extra holes on my nice pretty stainless shelf. Should we get these all the way to the back? Line this up. There we go. So essentially what I did here was I just got the clamps positioned and I took a black marker and made a dot, you know, so I took a marker in here, made a dot in the hole, and then I came up and I measured to make sure that they were equidistant, uh, made sure I had the the, the pump position properly. Uh, and then again, I had to drill new holes because I didn't leave enough clearance for the for the unloader valve. And so I have the pump centered up and the power cord is zip tied off the back. I'm gonna cut 90% of this so I have a nice, because I'm never gonna take mine off the shelf. Um, so that's positionally how, how it goes. Now, what I'm gonna be sending with the pump, I'm gonna be sending these anti-vibration clamps with some, uh, these are, in order to fit through the vibration clamps, because the holes weren't big enough for a quarter 20, uh, these are these are size 10, 5 8 inch long, stainless, again, stainless probably doesn't matter on any of this, I just wanted to match the shelf, but they are stainless um, uh, hex nuts or hex bolts. Now, if I can get this to stay here. So then I got a little wing nut. A little wing nut up in under here. The other thing you may want to consider if you're going to be taking this on and off periodically, you probably want to give yourself a little more room. I wanted to tuck it up into the shelf because now it's going to be a pain in the rear to get these on. I don't think this pressure washer is going anywhere anyway, but, you know, can't hurt to have it in position. Yeah, I like the idea of doing a little shorter nut so you can't see them. The three quarters I could kind of see. So I like that how these are positioned. The thing you could do is mount the pump to the shelf. Just lift the shelf, you know, put it all on in one piece. If you wanted to keep the pump or to keep the uh, keep the hose reel on really tightly. All right, so there's the wand holder mounted in place. You know, for now, let's just plug. This in like I had it before. I'm just gonna see how it looks. Let's check our width left to right. Under two. thinking is you know I got an M22 and I couldn't find I don't think anybody makes these in stainless so is an M22 to 3 8 plug so we'll go quick disconnect into there right keep moving my darn shelf and then what I think I'll probably do I'm going to get a, because this is about a foot too long, so I'm going to get a two, this is a three foot version, I'm going to get a two foot version, and I'm going to come, and I'm going to get another one of these anti-vibration clamps, I'm going to clamp the hose, and then come in, because what you'll notice, if I screw this in here, like so, and I turn the hose reel, turn the drag off so this thing pulls so if I fix this to here 
you know, I could even consider, maybe we should just stay with the, uh, that looks pretty good, but no, but this is gonna move. I'm gonna get a two foot, I think, because that won't stay like that. What I wanna do is have it come up and have it stay. Let's see, if I tuck this all the way up, and let's say I put a strap on it right there. Oops, idiot. I would keep it there. What do you think? Is the three foot the right size? If I put a little strap right there in the corner, another strap right there. So if we get two three eighths inch straps, a strap right here, this hose isn't going anywhere. So it'll hold it right in place. So as I move the reel, the swivel will stay in position. Right? Or do I wanna shorten this up and get like a two foot hose instead of a three foot. And just bring it in here like this. Take that foot off. I don't know, what do you think? There is more pressure on the hose that way than coming like this. You know, I don't think that's too much of a radius. I think that still works. How does that look? Because we're also going to have, think, I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to come out of here with some AN line. Shoot, this is going to be problematic. Let's do that. Let's put an end on this thing. Let's see what it looks like. And this, we've got a fitting on here. This converts, oh shoot. Welp, that ain't gonna work. And then what I was thinking about doing was bringing this down and around. But this stuff isn't very See, it kinks really easily. I think I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna hard bind this. I think what I'm gonna do, instead of this crap, I'm gonna go and plumb it like I did the other one. These don't vibrate enough that I think you can still go, we can still go a hard line in. And so, I'll probably do something like this. This will come out, come down, because I'm gonna be using the Prevost pipe for this. Because the other thing I was thinking about was just bringing the pipe up to here and then bringing a flex line, which I still might do. Just need to look for a better flex line. So anyway, that's where we're at. That's all I can do today. So the intent will be to, I'm gonna get some really clean stainless Prevost valves that come out the, the inlet outlet out of the wall bib here, we're going to be using the Prevost piping, which will be connected. I'm just going to stick with my normal one inch because that's what I have. And so I'm going to have a valve here, valve here, valve there. We'll run out of here, we'll tee off, and it'll come up to. So I'll have the option to run just fresh water or tap water versus DI water, because I'll turn the, I'll be able to turn the inlet on and off. I have to think about how that's gonna work. I'm gonna get all the parts and then have the plumber figure it out. So there's the, there's the update of what we got so far. Now I gotta figure out how to get the water in it. All right, that's the tricky part. Because the pump is kind of backwards. Actually, it's the CR that's backwards. 
man, looks clean. So that's the update on the system. Um, just bear with me. Uh, I'll have the pre-order up soon. Um, you know, this is this is a, a a clear example of how this stuff goes. You know, and now I mean, I've got to order some piping parts. I've got to order some hoses. I've got to order some some clamps, some things like that. I got to wait a few days, and so I've been I have a vision for it, and then I come to some conclusion, and then I buy a bunch of stuff. I mean, right over here I have a box filled with 175 bucks worth of uh, bolts and nuts and clamps and just trying different things. You know, and I know some you guys that are really handy like Mike who came here and did all this stuff could probably do this in one shot one order with just one grouping of products but the rest of us uh, we have to go through this process and so I'm you know I, I really enjoy the process so and so I'm falling on the sword for all of us and then maybe you don't have a vision for this of what this looks like but um, maybe you do but if you did then you wouldn't need me right so hopefully uh, this style of the way that this thing looks is uh, you know, appeals to you and it you know benefits all of us uh, this is what I want it to look like uh, and so I'm sure we could come up with some big enclosure where it's all together in a box but again and then where do you draw the line the cost right cost and effort uh, plus I really like how this kind of stuff looks like you can see the compressor on the opposite wall uh, you know the the polishers on that wall it just it just makes sense to me so anyway stay tuned I'll have uh, more videos here of install videos and video on each product uh, I'll be putting up the shelf in the store putting up the, the hose reel the hose is already up uh, in the store of course the Mosmetic gun uh, of course you'll probably notice this is the prototype of the new version uh, this will probably be later this summer uh, I'll also have the Mosmetic wand holder in the store uh, just know that there's a slight angle this kicks out a little bit off the wall uh, so know that uh, and uh, anyway so thanks for uh, bearing with me on this project and uh, following along and I'll, I'll be sure to keep everybody up to date with what, uh, what my findings are force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, to the floor, to the floor.